Hello, this is Maggie. I'm doing a chart for Seda Barat, if I pronounce that correctly. She donated $40 to my PayPal and would like her chart done. So, um, yeah, she's quite young. She's born under Venus, um, born December 31st, New Year's Eve, 2000, in Denmark, Copenhagen, Denmark. So, Seda, your sun is in Capricorn, 10 degrees. Your moon is in Pisces, very, very watery Pisces. And your ascendant is Virgo. You have a very balanced elements, um, with the exception of fire. Yeah, so I'm, you know, I don't know how much you know about astrology, so I'm going to try to break this down. Um, your chart, it, it appears like you're an introverted person. Only, I mean, you have some planets in the social, like in the fifth house of fun and um, Leo rules love affairs, the heart, fun times, creativity. So that is in Aquarius. And you have the ruler of Aquarius there. So you would be great with, and you also have Venus there. Venus is what you like. So you like to have fun. You probably like to have fun with electronics or on social media. You would excel in that, just totally excel. And with Neptune in the fifth house, you would, you would probably love some form of an escape through on um, fantasy, you do, or, you know, it could be fashion music, you know, music would really appeal to you if you're, if you're so inclined, <coughs> but you do have a square, a challenging 90 degree angle to Mars, Neptune to Mars could be, so you want to be very careful with, um, with drugs, you know, just be very careful. Only because Neptune, the ruler of Pisces, makes you extremely sensitive to them. And Mars, in a water sign, um, the ruler of Scorpio could be, you know, would also make you, <coughs> excuse me, make you very, very sensitive. You have a lot going on in the Aquarius house, which is your fun. So I would suggest having fun with, with social media, with electronics, um, and mix it up because Aquarius is there. Your sun is in Capricorn conjunct Mercury. So Mercury is the planet of communication. Capricorn <coughs> is an earth sign. Um, and your sun is in your fourth house of the home. So there's a lot of communication in the home. You may, you may enjoy staying home, um, working from home. Working from home would be a really good option. Having fun working from home, especially with your Venus and Uranus in Aquarius and Neptune, maybe doing music or something. Um, your ascendant is Virgo, so you're, um, you have some earth. You have some earth with practicality. No planets in the first house. The majority of your planets are um, in Aquarius. And then you have sun, your sun and Mercury in the fourth house of the home, family, children, ruled by the moon. In, um, yeah, in the fourth house of Cancer, you have Capricorn. So you also have the Virgo Ascendant, so that makes you very earthy. Uh, that, that would give you some practicality, uh, stubbornness, attention to detail, perhaps make you very good at business. Um, Capricorns are, are really hard workers, and they're very skilled at you know, climbing the ladder to success in whatever endeavor you choose to do. But it's good to do something that you like. Um, I was, I was debating on doing your transits, but at the same time, I didn't want to overwhelm you with too much, too, 
too much, you know. I just did that to someone and they really didn't know what I, <coughs> it was too much information. Uh, so, yeah, so everything pretty much is below the, I, you know, below the IC. So that would, that would make you sort of like an introvert. Um, your sixth house moon is beautiful. It's in Pisces, very sweet Pisces, intuitive, se extremely sensitive. So it, it rules work and health. So, um, you know, it could be, you could work in the medical field. You don't have to work at all, but you could, if you're musically inclined, you know, that would be colored Piscean or fashion or any, any Neptunian, um, you could combine that with Neptune. But you would be very sensitive in the workplace with your moon there, it's your emotional nature, so you would need probably a timeout to yourself. Um, yeah, so, you know, and your, your feelings could get hurt maybe easily, but working with See, if you're in a band or something, you know, it's, I mean, you could just tune into the workplace. You would be vibing it out all the time because that's what Pisces do. They vibe it out. So you'd be, your moon in Pisces <coughs> would make you extremely sensitive to your environment. Not only your work environment, but it's just, you know, you, you just pick up on everything. You pick up on people's moods and the vibe in the room, if you go to a party, you just, you know, you, you vibe it out first. So, since it's in your sixth house of work and health, you, you, you know, that would apply to the workplace as well. Or you could, uh, because Pisces is compassion, Neptune is compassion, service, and it's in Virgo's house, and, you know, their service to a very analytical, you know, you could. That could be nursing or something in the health field, occupation in a health field where you would be helping people because your Pisces moon would love that, it would love helping people. Um, so your Saturn is in Taurus, in the ninth house of values, travel, law, higher law, and your Jupiter is in Jupiter is in Gemini, two degrees, but they're, they're very close together. So Gemini is on your MC, the, the midheaven. So if you were looking towards a career, you would look, you would look towards the midheaven to see what's going on up there. <coughs> and you do have Jupiter very close by. So, you know, something in the travel industry or um, Saturn is making the Saturn in the ninth house is making a square aspect to your Venus. So that could sometimes make you feel sort of, and it's, you know, your Venus is in your fun, like fun house, you know, your fifth house of love. And so Saturn could make you feel maybe sometimes like you're, you're not getting the love you want or, you know, like it's hard or difficult or maybe some separation or delay. Um, but it may be just the way you're feeling, it, you know, and maybe not the reality. Um, maybe not the reality because with everything in Aquarius, um, you, you would really have a ton of friends, but with, with, <clears throat> with everything in your fifth house square and your you're Saturn, sometimes you, you may feel lonely. Um, yeah, and so your Jupiter, two degrees Gemini, would give you very good luck, good fortune in any kind of a Gemini career. Any, or if, if you're not looking for a career, it's just, you know, how people see you. And they would see you as extremely social. Jupiter is optimistic, buoyant. Um, it's the ruler of, of Sagittarius, so it has a very uh, far-reaching vision, and it's expansive and yeah, and futuristic. So to have that in Gemini, you would excel again in social skills, 
and electronics because it's in trine with all your Aquarius stuff. Your Venus, what you like, your Aquarius. I mean, your Uranus and Aquarius, which rules electronics and communication. And Neptune, <coughs> again, would be fashion. And that would go along with your Pisces moon as well in the sixth house. So I'm not just focusing on work, but, you know, it, it was sort of, you know, what I see, I can't go over every single aspect, but I'm, your three planets in Aquarius are like the higher octave of Gemini. So Gemini is social, you know, <clears throat> and Aquarius takes it to another level. They're, they're more analytical and, and, you know, humanitarian and they put it into practice. And you may definitely with Uranus there have some really original, unique, eccentric, uh, maybe strange friends. Uh, or hobbies, or uh, you could, uh, it's a ruler of astrology, so you could, you could love astrology, um, especially having it almost conjunct Venus, it's what you like, so you like, for fun, you know, quirky things, and, you know, your love, love affairs would be um, radical, but different, you know, you might be attracted to strange, different people, or it could be like a musician because you have Jupiter there as well. Um, yeah. So let's see. Pluto, you have in the third house of Sagittarius. So Pluto, uh, Pluto is square your moon in Pisces. So Pluto is depth of communication. It's the ruler of Scorpio. So it's in the Gemini house in Sagittarius. So it just gives you um, a lot of depth. You know, you don't want to talk on a superficial Gemini level. Not that Geminis are superficial in any way, but <coughs> with Pluto there, it's the ruler of Scorpio. So you want to go very, very deep. Um, and it's square your moon in Pisces. So that's a challenging angle. Um, yeah, so it's it's like fire and water. Um, but that just that just challenges you to. I think the way it's probably challenging you is your moon in Pisces kind of likes quiet, you know, it's more introverted, and Pluto in Sagittarius is just very forceful, very forceful, and it wants to get to the depths, and, and it's in a fire sign, so, you know, it's ch kind of challenging you to come out of your shell, you know, the Pisces, and <coughs> watery shell, to, to have this forceful Plutonian conversation, you know, or it could be travel, it could be travel, law, um, Maybe communication with authority figures or endings. Um, excuse me, your Mars is in your your house of values, assets, and money in Scorpio. So Mars in Scorpio in the second house gives you the ability to make money, to get out there and make money any way you want to. Um, but again, beware of your Mars square Neptune <clears throat> because you know that could give you a. You just want to be careful with that because you know sometimes Mars Mars is co-ruler of Scorpio along with Pluto, and sometimes it can be a malefic, especially if it's square Neptune. And, you know, if you're having too much fun, you know, the fifth house of recreation and love affairs. You know, you want to with Neptune. Be careful that you're not deceived by friends. Sometimes, you know, they may not be what they appear to be. And your Pisces moon would be all loving and trusting everyone, idealizing them out of proportion. Um, yeah, or your fun could be sort of on the, on, the, on the edge, you know? So just be careful, like with recreational drugs, just be careful because it, your Neptune is squaring Mars, 
<coughs> so you just want to be aware of that. Uh, so that's just briefly an overview. Um, so your your only flyer is Pluto and Chiron, the asteroid, the wounded here is in the fourth house of the home. <coughs> uh, you, have, you have so much air, you're extremely talented with Venus, Uranus, and Neptune in Aquarius. I would love to have that. <laughs> I, I really could use that. I need a lot of help with electronics, so, you know, <coughs> that, that is great to have. Yeah. And Jupiter and the Midheaven are in Gemini, so yeah, I just see really good fortune with good fortune and expansion through your social social skills, through your friendships, through your um, social media, electronics. And you can make a lot of friends that way with your sensitive Pisces moon. You know, you, you, a lot of people just interact on me, media now, you know? Um, yeah, so, yeah, so I, I really love your air. I really like your air. You've got the air going on and the practicality to, you know, put something into reality. If, if you want to, you have the sun and Mercury in Capricorn. The Capricorns are very great at succeeding at whatever they do. I keep saying, you know, working from the home for something, if, if you wanted to, or starting a YouTube channel, or for fun though, just for fun. You don't have to do, you know, do it for work. Just, just have fun with whatever you wanna, whatever, you know, you wanna do. <coughs> um, and Saturn gives you the discipline. Saturn in, in Taurus, in the ninth house of Sagittarius, ninth house of values, uh, and it's conjunct Jupiter, gives you steadfast, because it's the ruler of Capricorn, so it gives you steadfastness, perseverance, um, gives you the ability to just buckle down and get it done. Get it done and, you know, make it happen. And, because Saturn is square to your Venus and your Uranus, that's not bad. That just means that you have the ability to use your Saturn in <clears throat> your Saturn in Taurus to to manifest it, to bring it into reality. Because somebody with no Earth could not do that, but you could. You would. You have the ability to work really hard, and all this Earth. It gives you practicality and, you know, makes you business-minded. Well, at the same time, to have Jupiter on your mid-heaven is extremely good luck and good fortune. Really good fortune. Your north node is in Cancer in the 10th house. So that's interesting. That's Your north node is what you strive towards in this lifetime. You know, some people hit the mark and some don't, but it's interesting that it's in Cancer in, in the 10th house. The 10th house is where you look for a career. So it's an intercepted house. Um, has Gemini, MC, but your north node's in Cancer. So I kind of look at both houses. So again, it could be work, work with electronics or social media from the home, if, if you wanted to, or just for fun. <laughs> um, yeah, so you have a ton of air, and it's really fortunate air. Jupiter and Gemini on the MC is, is you could be a rapper. <laughs> you could do, it. yeah. So, but your Mars, your Mars is in conjunct, in conjunct Jupiter, so you know you may not be aware that you have all these skills. <laughs> you may not see that side of you. Others may see it in you, but you may not may not see it. But just be aware that you do have the ability, and Mars's action will strong drive. It's extremely powerful in the, in the second house, extremely powerful, 
and take the job Jupiter. Yeah, you could you could really do do things with that. So and you also yeah, and you're ascendant Virgo. So you have like four things in her. That's quite a bit. And you have three planets in Aquarius and Jupiter in the midheaven in Gemini. So you're so quick mentally. I mean, thoughts, ideas, just, you know, you just grab them out of the air. But with the earth, you're able to bring them down to earth and implement them, whatever it is. If it's going to school, if it's, you know, whatever it is. Um, your water, water um, you have your north node in Cancer. Um, so that's home, family, nurturing. Um, it's ruled by the moon, you know, your mother. Um, yeah, so some sort of Cancerian um, career because people look to the 10th house for a career or the mid heaven. So if your north node is there. So, you know, you probably meant to put something up there eventually. Um, so you know, take your time. Not everyone does it, you know. But something Cancerian or Gemini, something in the public eye, or or how you how you portray yourself, and that may be a cooking channel, or I don't know. I don't know. You know how you how you manifest that is is entirely up to you, but. There seems to be sort of a theme going on between the North Node in Cancer in your career, 10th house, and the 4th house is the home of Cancer, and you have both the Sun and Mercury, the planet of communication in Capricorn. The, the, I was going to say the sign of business, but that's Capricorn's house is the 10th house. So you have that going for you. Um, yeah. So if you wanted to, to use that, it would benefit you. Yeah, so, so your water is your, your north node in Cancer. Your Mars. Um, your Mars in Scorpio is very powerful. Very powerful in your asset house. And that's Scorpio is joint finances. Um, joint finances, what you value, you know, material, material assets, um, Scorpio is sexuality as well. So you may somehow merge your assets with someone, possibly. Um, yeah, but anyway, Mars gives you drive and ambition to, to do that. And it's an intercepted house, so it also has Libra there, so it could be through through the arts. You know, Libra is beauty, the arts, fashion, all things beautiful, <laughs> Libra. So, um, yeah, so your water, ele other water uh, element is the moon. So it's a pretty well-rounded chart. Um, you have... A lot of trying sextiles. Pluto square Mars, we covered that. But anyway, if you if you have any questions, say that. I hope I really do hope you enjoyed this. Um, I will have to get your email so I can email you this chart. Um, but if you have any questions, please let me know. I'll send you my email as well. Okay, thank you. It should be on my page. It should be on my page. Okay. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this. If you want your chart done, please like and subscribe and just donate $40 to my PayPal. And I will do your chart and post it on YouTube. Okay, thank you.